Hey everybody. Here looking at my dual display setup. In this video we're talking about my rightmost monitor, the Westinghouse L2046 NV display that I got back in 2007 for Christmas. So I've had this monitor for, for 10 years now. Back in 2013 started having issues with it. Um, I noticed it was hard to start in the mornings like when it was cold. Turns out um, almost all of the capacitors on the second area of the power supply had failed. They were all caps on and I replaced them. And that got the monitor back up and running. However, um, it brought on a new issue which I think was this I think the issue started out with the uh, caps failing delivering nasty power to the uh, logic board but um, it's like ever since then this monitor just doesn't really know what model making model monitor it is. It's a Westinghouse but when you hook it up via DVI to the computer it reports something totally different. So it used to be the workaround I had available for that was just use VGA. Um, it, it would re report the correct information through VGA. Now it's up until about a few months ago. Yeah, after a few months ago, um, after a power blink, I turned the machine on. I noticed this right monitor was displaying very oddly. It was displaying a widescreen resolution. I was able to get around that by going into the Radeon Custom Resolution Manager or something like that. Um, I've Actually, I should have it in my utilities. We'll take a look at that. Um, wherever it's at. Let me see here. Yeah, Radeon Custom Resolution Manager. And you can see that I have a 4x3 setting of 1400x1050 set. See, this monitor is not exactly 4x3. Um, it has a very odd resolution, not your typical resolution. Um, again, 1400 by 1050. So, when the VGA um, connection would no longer report the correct information, the uh, video card was essentially using a resolution that it knew would actually be compatible, which was actually a widescreen resolution. So everything was was shown out of proportion. Okay, so as you may know. The Mid-Tower Lux has been upgraded. It currently has the Radeon RX 550 series graphics card in it, which previously, um, with this monitor, when I was running it via VGA, I just had, you know, this little simple adapter hooked up to it. Now it adapt to VGA. Well, actually, yeah, it would adapt the um, DVI output from the video card to a VGA to the monitor. This is just simply a pinout adapter. It's not actually a digital to analog adapter. The older cards could not put digital or analog through the DVI port depending on make and model of the card. Newer cards like this one, however, do not actually put out VGA over the DVI connection. It's only digital. So, little adapters like this will not work. So, with that being said, I had to go back to running this monitor with DVI. You may notice something looks really weird about it. Everything looks a little too big. See, this monitor right now is currently displaying in 1280 by 1024 because it thinks it's a 17-inch Acer monitor. Yeah, it thinks it's a 17-inch Acer display with a native resolution of 1280 by 1024. Now, this 19-inch Dell monitor does have a native resolution of 1280 by 1024, and you may notice how everything looks very well legible. Now, of course, it's not like your 4K displays, but um, pretty well legible. However, on this monitor, you may notice how stuff looks a little, a little iffy. That's what happens when you run your display at not the native resolution. When you run, when you run it at a small resolution, make the text bigger. Um, yeah, I don't recommend actually doing that. So yeah, this monitor is reporting the wrong information to the video card. So if we go to Radeon settings, and of course this is actually a newer version of software than I had before, so bear with me here. As you see, the left monitor is a Dell 1907 FP, which is the correct make and model. 
The right mantra, however, is incorrect. It says it's an Acer AL 1714. No, it's not an Acer AL 1714. This is a Westinghouse L2046 NV. So we have to manually force it to um, show the correct resolution. We can do this by way of another utility. called CRU. I'm going to launch the utility. And you can see um, what this does, matter of fact, um, what we can do is we can pull up a website that tells you more about this. Okay, so here's a website that talks about the um, problem. It's actually a forum site called monitortest.com. Essentially, uh, what this utility does, it allows custom resolutions to be defined for both AMD, ATI, and NVIDIA graphics cards by creating EDID overrides directly in the register without dealing with .inf files. Um, see, essentially, your monitor stores this EDID information, and when you plug it into a display, into a, to a video card, um, the monitor's EDID information is sent to the video card to tell it to make a model and what native resolution and refresh rate it's designed for. So in the case of the Westinghouse display, it thinks it's a different monitor. It thinks it's a different make and model monitor than what it actually is. So it's reporting that it's an Acer AL1714 with a um, native, res native resolution of 12 by 1024 when it's not the correct information. So we're going to use CRU to go ahead and update this information. So what we do is, um, of course, there is a download link. If I remember to do so, I'll put this in the description. This actually, seemed, from what I was reading the line, this is actually a pretty common problem with Westinghouse displays. Doesn't surprise me. So, unfortunately, we can't change the name that, that the make and models reported by this monitor, but we can, however, edit the resolution. To 1400 by 1050. Let's go ahead and OK. And what this will do, you'll click OK. However, um, when you go into settings or whatnot to update your display resolution, you'll notice that the options are not there. You need to re re you'll need to restart your computer to actually update the um, resolution. Okay, now we restarted the computer, and now you can see in display settings we have 1400 by 1050 available. We're going to select it, keep changes, and now this display is working at its proper resolution. And you can see it's a whole lot more clear. So yeah, it's kind of a bizarre issue, but hopefully this is helpful for you if you're actually having this problem. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.